Hi, I'm Alex Hatmarie. I'm a mechanical engineer at Hexagon, and I help students and professors put our simulation software to work. In this video, I'm going to show you how to model beams and bending. This is going to use a custom tool that really streamlines the process, and that'll give us the time to start off by talking a little bit about beam terminology, and then I'll show you how to make a lot of modifications to a model to be able to see all different ways that you could modify a beam and how that would affect its performance in practice. Um, I'm also going to go over how to use the built-in beams tool that lets you assign whatever geometry cross-section you want to a beam. It's very easy to model beams and bending in Apex and to modify them, and so we're going to use this as an opportunity to see how varying different properties on a beam can change the stress and deflection that we see in the beam. This first case is going to be really easy to generate using the Education Custom tool. These other cases are not going to be that hard either, and I'll talk you through all of those first. Then I'll show you how to change the cross-section of the beam using the built-in beams tool. Finally, I'll show you how to generate a simply supported beam, and a lot of what you'll need for that is just some terminology about beams. So let's go to Apex and make a beam. To make a beam, we click Education, Beam, and click the green check mark. Then we click the yellow runner to run the simulation. The first time we enter post-processing, we click Make Post. The beam tool made a shear and bending moment diagram on the right for us. We can click on the left, and then click the left and right mouse buttons simultaneously, and we see the deformed beam. The deformation is exaggerated, which you can turn off by clicking this button, or you can click this button to show it at its true scaling or some other relative scaling. We'll just stick with the default for now. You can click on the fringe plot, and that will show you uh, what the magnitude of the displacement is. And we can change the units here to millimeters to make that easier to interpret. So about three millimeters. Now we can visualize the stress. And let's change the units to megapascals. We can click and drag with the middle mouse button to be able to see the beam. On the right end of the beam, it looks green. Well, that's basically zero megapascals, which is what we would, which is what we would expect at the free end of a beam. Let's look at the fixed end. We have stress varying from minus 48 to plus 48 megapascals by matching up the colors on the beam with the colors on the color bar. I'm going to exit post-processing by clicking this exit button. When we return from post-processing, sometimes we need to click 3D beam span to show the beam cross-section again. Now I'm going to show you how to modify the beam. So we click Education, Beam, and then we can change the material, like to aluminum. We can change the right-hand side of the beam to being at 2 meters. We can change the magnitude of the force to be like 2E3 for 2000, and we can change the location that that force is applied to 2, and that would keep it applied at the right-hand side of the beam. We'll click Apply to update all of these changes. Now I'm going to show you how to change the cross-section of the beam, like we might need to change its width, make it have a circular cross-section, or make it have an I-beam cross-section. First, let's change the width or height of the beam. We can do that by entering the Beams tool and click Edit. And let's click and drag with the middle mouse button so we see the end of the beam. To change the width from 0.05 to 0.025 meters, we just enter that value in there. Um, and the beam updates right away and we would be ready to run the simulation just like this, just by clicking the yellow runner. Let's change the width back, 0.05. And we can change the height by entering in 25 space mm for 25 millimeters. And we'll hit enter. And this would be ready to run also. We can use a circular cross section, a solid circle, like this. And then we would just enter in a radius. So I could enter 55. Uh, well, that gives us 55 meters. 55 space mm gives us 55 millimeters. Um, but if we want a diameter of 55 millimeters, we'll actually need to enter half this number. I'll let you figure that one out on your own. We can assign an I-beam cross-section. So let's click on that. 
Apex wants a bunch of dimensions from us. Where do these come from? Well, they normally come from a table of stock sizes, and I'll show you how to read one that's set up to work nicely with Apex. So we want an I-beam with 160 millimeter height, but we need a lot of other dimensions to set to. I-beam dimensions are typically found from tables of stock sizes that look like this. Um, these specific dimensions that I have called out here correspond to what you see in the forms in Apex. So for a beam with a height of 160 millimeters, we need to enter D1, D2, D3, D4 values of 72, 8, 144, and 160 millimeters. So let's go do that now. So we'll enter 72 space mm, 8 space mm, or again we could use decimals like 0.144 and 0.16. We'll hit enter, and now we have an I-beam. So that's all that you need to know to be able to change the beam cross-section. The last thing to do is to talk about support types. In a textbook, you often see beams described as having a fixed constraint where this end can't rotate or slide at all, a pinned connection that allows some rotation, a roller that allows sliding back and forth but not motion up and down, or a free condition, which means we haven't constrained it at all. Quite often, beams are either cantilevers or simply supported, at least in textbooks. In a cantilever beam, the left end is fixed and the right end is free. With a simply supported beam, one end is a pin and the other one is constrained with a roller. I'll show you how to set this up in Apex. So we go back to the beam tool, we can click Education, Beam, and we can just change the supports here. So if all we need is simply supported, we can do pin, and roller and click apply and that'll do the right thing. All right, great. And that is everything that you need to model beams in Apex. Wonderful. So that's how you model a beam in bending using MSC Apex. I want you to check the description for more information, like how to get our software for free or how to get in touch. And you should get in touch if you want access to the education custom tools or to curriculum that connects finite element analysis to solid mechanics. All right, have a great day. Bye.